Okay, so let's do this fairly simple combination circuit. The uh, values I've given you, so you have a total current in the circuit that's one amp. And then we've got the four resistors here. So uh, really the only thing we can start with is to find our total resistance. So our total resistance, we can see that these two resistors in series, and these two are in series, but the sum of these two are in parallel with the sum of those two. So that's where we're going to start. So our RT equation would be R1 plus R2 is in parallel with R3 plus R4. So if we just put in the values here, R1 uh, plus R2, we've got 600 ohms. And that is in parallel with R3 and R4 together is 400 ohms. We've got 600 in parallel with 400. So in your calculator, you're going to go 600. You're going to hit that button, X negative 1. You're going to add on 400 and hit that button again, X negative 1 equals and hit X negative 1 one more time and you should come to a value that is 240 ohms. 240 ohms. So our RT in the circuit is 240 ohms. So now we can get our voltage. So our voltage in the circuit, this is going to be a very easy calculation. So according to Ohm's law, is E equals I times R is equal to I total times R total. My total is 1 amps. My resistance total is 240 ohms. So I should have 240 volts. Fairly simple. 240 volts. So let's take a vote. Let's take a look at our individual voltage uh, dissipations in this circuit. Now one of the easy ways to do this is well we can say well we can use a rule it's called a voltage divider rule. And we're going to find our voltage here at E uh, E1. So we're going to say E1 voltage is what we need to find. We're going to find E2 and E3 and E4 but the voltage divider rule says that the voltage at uh, pick a resistor, so x variable, uh, is equal to of that resistor divided by the total resistance in that branch, so meaning this one here, uh, times the voltage total. So if we were to look at that, we'd say, well, okay, the voltage, we want to find out the voltage for one is equal to the resistance of 1 divided by the total resistance times the total voltage. So plugging in the values, resistance 1 is 325 ohms. And the total in that branch is 600, so 300 divided by 600 ohms times the total voltage of 240 volts should leave you with 130 volts. So the voltage here at 1 is 130 volts. We've got a 130 volt drop. Now the total applied voltage across this branch from here to here is my applied voltage of 240 volts. This one here, we just dropped 130. So 240 minus 130 is going to give us 110 volts here. All right, let's do E3 over here. So we know E1, so E1 was 130 volts. Let's do E3 using the same rule. So we're going to say the voltage at 3 is equal to the resistance of 3 divided by the total resistance in that branch times the total voltage using the voltage divider rule. And resistor 3 is 150 ohms. The total resistance in that branch is 400 ohms times the total applied voltage, which is 240 volts, should give you a voltage of 90 volts. So we're going to put 90 volts up over here. 
Now, keeping in mind the same rule applies, we have 240 there. We have 240 here as well, from here to here. 240 volts. So we can apply the same logic that, well, if I have 240 there and I just dropped 90 there, then the difference must be over here, which is 150 volts. Okay, so now we can get our amperages in this here. So let's draw our current arrows here. So we got a, so we got one amp of current. Some goes down that way, and the remaining goes down through there. Now, current in a series circuit stays the same, and the voltage divides. Current in a parallel circuit divides, but the voltage stays the same. So we have a combination circuit here. So we're going to have both current divisions and voltage divisions. So to find our current, we're just going to use our Ohm's law, and we're going to say, well, the current at resistor 1 is equal to the voltage at resistor 1 divided by the resistance of resistor 1. And our voltage at resistor 1, we've determined to be 130 volts, and the, the resistance of 1 is 325 ohms. So I equals E over R, so 130 divided by 325 should give you 0.4 of an amp. So we can write 0.4 of an amp here. And because all that current must go through, it has no other ch choice but to go through this resistor, this resistor must also be 0.4 amps because at this portion, at this point in the circuit, the those two resistors in series, and in the series circuit, the resistance, uh, sorry, the amperage stays the same in that. Now you can check. You can say, well, okay, so I2 is equal to um, E2 over R2, and E2 is 110 volts, and R2 is 275 ohms. So you're going to come out to 0.4 as well. So we've proven that. Okay, so let's take a look. I have 0.4 of an amp that is broken off from the total amperage, so I, I have one total. And then 0 0.4, 0 0.4 amps has gone down this branch. So it's leaving me, it's leaving me with 0 0.6 of an amp up here that's going down and it's now cruising through these resistors. So this must be 0 0.6 of an amp and this must be 0 0.6 of an amp. And of course you can check any one that you want. So let's just check uh, I4 is equal to E4 over R4. Uh, and E4 is 150 volts divided by 250 ohms gives us 0.6 of an amp. So the 0.6 there plus the 0.4 over there combine and at this point return path coming back to my power supply I would have 1 amp. Okay. Let's do our individual power dissipations. Let's do our total power over here. So my power total is equal to my voltage total times my amperage total. So my voltage total, 240 volts times one amp gives me a total of 240 watts. 240 watts, okay. So now we're doing an individual power dissipations. E1 equals E1 times I1. 